بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful All praises be to Allah Peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad, his family and his companions Peace and blessings be upon you Jazakum Allah khair for uh, attending. Insha'Allah, uh, this, this uh, lecture is also recorded uh, for the ones who miss it. Insha'Allah, they can watch it on my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash rubakiwar.com. Jazakum Allah khair. So in the beginning, I would like to start with Hadith Qudsi. And when I say Qudsi, it means the, uh, the holy Hadith. And it was called the holy, the holy or Qudsi because it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking on the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's not a Quran. It is a revelation from Allah, but it is not a Quran like, you know, uh, that it is a revelation uh, as a Quran. But it is a Hadith that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam spoke, he said, Allah said this and that. So when, when he say in the Hadith, Allah said, we know that this is a Hadith Qudsi or a holy Hadith. So Abu Huraira is one of the companions. He reported that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah Almighty said, I have divided prayer between myself and my servant into two halves. And this actually shows the very importance of the uh, of the prayer, especially the Fatiha, the first chapter of the Quran. So when we start, we start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the, the most merciful. Then he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I have divided prayer between myself and my servant into two halves, and my servant shall have what he has asked for. When the servant says, all praises is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. When he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah says, my servant has praised me. Uh, my servant has praised me. And then when he says, the gracious, the merciful, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Allah says, my servant has exalted me. And when he says the master of the day of judgment, Maliki Yawmiddin, Allah says, my servant has glorified me and my servant has submitted to me. And when he says the servant, you alone we worship, you alone we ask for help, Allah says, this is between me and my servant and my servant will have whatever he asked for. When he says, guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored, not those who went astray. When the servant says, الصراط المستقيم, صراط عليهم, غير المغضوب عليهم, ولا الضالين, Allah says, this is for my servant and my servant will have what he asked for. Subhanallah. SubhanAllah, how beautiful that is. It's like there is kind of like give and take conversation. Like the servant would say something and Allah answers back. The servant would say something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers back. And this is the beauty of the salah. Salah means salah, to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just imagine how important the salah is. If there is a reward for the Wudu. When we did, when I did my lecture, I gave some hadiths about how important the wudu is, and it is a maghfira, means like it is a forgiveness from Allah to those people, you know. And then after that, we have the person who actually walks to the masjid. Also, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will take away from all his sins and then give him reward. If there is also a person who would sit between the adhan and the time of the prayer in the masjid, also he gets a lot of reward and it is like a ibadah by itself. It is a worship by itself. So imagine, how, how, what about the salah? What about the salah itself? You know, if all the things for preparing the salah and after the salah and whatever you say before and after the salah, you know, it has a great reward. So what about the salah itself? This is how important salah is, subhanAllah. There are different benefits of the Muslim prayers. There are spiritual benefits, there are emotional benefits, there are psychological benefits, and there are physical benefits. And I'm going to go through each one uh, separately, inshallah. Especially, uh, first, the spiritual benefit. 
recite what has been revealed to you of your book and establish prayer. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter 29 of the Quran. Indeed, prayer prohibits immorality and wrongdoing. Subhanallah, if someone has some kind of uh, bad thoughts or evil thoughts or, you know, or about to do something that it is haram, like drinking alcohol or something like this, to tell you honestly, the salah is the one actually blocks between you and the haram stuff, you know, and you'll see if there is a Muslim starts going astray and they start going to drink and going, you know, seeing opposite sex and things like that, you will see that his prayer will become lighter and lighter until he lose the whole prayer. So the prayer actually is so important because it's this, it's this, uh, um, uh, this push or this thing that it keeps you on the track it keeps you on the right path and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says indeed indeed prayer prohibits morality uh, immorality and wrongdoing and the remembrance of Allah is greater and Allah knows what which you do so the prayer fills the spiritual void which exists in all of us and it is like a one-on-one -on -one session. It strengthens the relationship with our creator, thus raising your spiritual status, status deraja in Arabic. And it receives spiritual guidance and divine inspiration. When you are doing sujood or prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it also gives you some kind of guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it in your heart. It purifies the soul by constantly remembering Allah and it is a way to express gratitude towards Allah and it obtain mercy and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah this is for the spiritual now for the emotional it instills reverence towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it, it it gives you stronger faith in God his divine his decree and his sovereignty and it and it makes you understand what you can or cannot change it it's you find contempt contentment contentment in his decree and in your submission to his will you will have some kind of rida pleasure you are pleased that you are with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also it increases emotional intelligence and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran Without doubt, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find satisfaction? Subhanallah. Then about the psychological benefits. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who have believed, seek help through patience and prayer. Indeed, Allah is with the patient. That's the imam, yes. So it tame the ego and becomes more humble when you pray. It helps to achieve balance in life and peace of mind. It is a means of taking a break from chaotic and hectic lifestyle. We should actually prepare our salah and organize and manage our salah time around, uh, you know, and then we, we manage all the other things around our salah time. You know, it's not supposed to be like, oh, whenever I'm done with this thing, then I will just go and pray. And subhanAllah, you know, uh, one lesson that I learned one time I went to Kuwait back in 2007, I was like, maybe like it was my second or third year Muslim at that time. And uh, um, I was with a group of people. They were all sitting, you know, having tea. And it was like they were socializing. And then subhanAllah, suddenly the adhan just went off and uh, everybody was listening to adhan and then suddenly everybody just stood up and they went for the prayer and they said and it was like a not socialized they were actually doing some kind of business with each other like they were actually talking about like doing a program on tv and things like that so it was a very important you know subject that they were talking about uh, but subhanallah when the prayer came they just dropped everything they went to the prayer and then came back after the prayer and they finished their conversation. And this is the attitude that we should have. We should all have that, you know. Yes, subhanAllah, Allah gave us a window where we can actually pray later after the adhan or things like that. But still, we're not supposed to be delaying our time until the next prayer. We're supposed to, once we hear the adhan, it's better to pray take it off our chest and also at the same time like you cool off you take that little break between you and your creator and then come back to work to work 
So it's also having a routine and regular good habit gives sense of security and this reduces emotional and mental stress. So when you know that there is a prayer, let's say at 1.30 and your lunch is around one o'clock. So let's say that you're going to delay your lunch time at work till 1.30 so you can pray, have your lunch and then come back to work. You can do that. And that actually will make you also feel good about yourself, subhanAllah. It avoid depression and anxiety because you are spiritual content and mentally at peace and it trains a person to live a productive life by being disciplined so this is about the emotional and psych psychological uh, benefits of the salah now let's talk about the physical benefit of course there is a benefit physical benefit there because you actually do some kind of motions and when you're doing those motions you know when you are sitting on your desk for like four hours at work or something like that and then you stand up and you do those motions it's not only just like a, a, an exercise for the spirit but also an exercise for the body there are some scientific studies say that the contact uh, the contact prayer or salah improves blood circulation for the physical body. It is also most important physical benefit of the prayer because it aligns intentions with actions. The foundation of being a good Muslim is to believe with the heart and to manifest the faith into good deeds. Because in Islam, you know, faith does not mean only just believe by the heart. It's not like other people who think that, oh, whatever you believe in your heart, then this is sufficient. No, but it's also you have to act upon it and acting upon it by doing actions. So if you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you believe in salah as a connection as a connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we should actually act upon it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in chapter 61, all you who have believed, why do you say what you do not do? Great is hatred in the sight of Allah that you say what you do not do. And here is he's addressing those hypocrite people that they actually say, oh, we love Allah. We would like to, to do things for Allah. But subhanAllah, they, it's just talk, 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 empty talk, but there is nothing really done. Now let's talk about, <clears throat> I would like to talk about the virtues of each prayer, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and Aisha. Fajr, which is down prayer, Dhuhr, it's like the noon prayer. We have the Asr afternoon. Then we have the Maghrib, which is after the sunset. And then after that, the Isha, when it is completely dark. And I explained about each one technically before. <coughs> However, I would like to speak about it from a spiritual perspective and the virtual uh, and the virtues and the um, and the benefits of it from the hadith of the prophet, peace be upon him. And I found 10 benefits and 10 virtues of the, uh, you know, of the Fajr prayer by itself. And this is what I will be talking about today, the Fajr prayer. And then next time, inshallah, I will be talking about the other prayers, inshallah. So the Fajr prayer, it is, it is called the pillar of the prayers and the first. So we have the pillars of Islam, which are like to believe in Allah and then to establish the prayer, to uh, to do siyam, to do the zakah, and to do hajj, which is the pilgrimage. We have the pillars of faith, or they call them the articles of faith, is to believe in Allah and to, be, to believe in the angels, in the prophets, in the books, in the day of judgment, and also in the qadr, which is the final destiny. But also for the prayers itself, there is also a pillar. And the pillar of the prayers is actually Fajr prayer. Because it's the first prayer that you do after you wake up. Now, it is not the first prayer of all the prayers. Because I will be talking later about the first prayer, which is Maghrib. Because the day in the Islamic calendar and Islamic timing, the day ends at Maghrib time and the new day starts after Maghrib. So the Maghrib is actually, or the sunset, after the sunset is the first prayer, but the pillar of all the prayers is actually Fajr. Subhanallah, the Prophet Sallallahu said also, who does, who does not pray Fajr or dawn prayer, then he, she, or she has a character of hypocrisy. So subhanAllah, you know, if someone does not wake up for prayer or find it so heavy for them to, op to wake up for the prayer and uh, I mean, and they don't, they don't do it, then they need to check their intention and check their heart and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take away that hypocrisy from their heart. Fajr prayer is also a real test. Just imagine in the time of when it is too cold, you have to uncover yourself and it's so cold. 
go to the bathroom. If there is no hot water, then you are supposed to do like, you know, uh, we'll do with the cold water or even like it's so cold that you have to stand up in the cold and prayer and pray this is a real test or when it is too hot and it is summertime and usually the isha is too late like after 10 o'clock in the summertime and then you know of course you would you wouldn't go sleep right away right after isha prayer sometimes we stay till like 12 or 1 o'clock in the summer and then you have to wake up the next morning like around 4 30 or 5 o'clock for the prayer so it's a real test it's not something easy to wake up for the Fajr prayer. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it this way for us to test ourselves. To Because this life is a test. The whole life is a test. Subhanallah. This is the test before we go to Jannah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no prayer is harder for the hypocrite than the Isha and the Fajr prayer. But if they knew their reward, they would certainly come to the masjid, even if they had to crawl. Subhanallah. If they knew how benefits they have, how blessing there are, benefits, you know, of the Fajr prayer, they would be actually crawling to the masjid to come for the prayer. But most hypocrites, they don't know that. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanse us for, from any hypocrisy and help us to wake up for the Fajr prayer. I mean. When it is the time of the prayer in the morning, you will hear the adhan is different a little bit than the other adhan. So we have the person who does the adhan for Fajr at the masjid. They say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. And then he, and then he, he adds something else. He says, As salatu khayrun min al nawm. Means prayer is better than sleep. Uh, salah is better than sleep. Subhanallah. As salatu khayrun min al nawm. And that tells you how important the Fajr prayer. And then he say, of course, also he say, Hayya ala salah, come to the prayer. Hayya ala al falah, come to the success. Because salah itself is actually a success. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. God is the greatest. La ilaha illallah means there is no God but Allah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said, give good news to the ones who walk in the dark to the masjids. They will have complete light in the day of judgment. Subhanallah. Long time ago, they didn't have lights. They didn't have cars, you know, where it lightened the streets and, and things like that. They, people used to walk to the masjid in the dark. And the lights were not actually established in the masjid until the second Khalifa came. His name is Omar bin Khattab, who actually put these lights in the masjid. But before that, people used to walk to the masjid in the dark, and they used to pray in the masjid also in the dark. So just imagine that the Prophet, peace be upon him, he gave good news to those people who actually wake up in the masjid, uh, who go to the masjid in the dark, but in the day of judgment, they will have light around them. Subhanallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lighten our hearts and help us to wake up for the Fajr. Second benefit of Fajr prayer, that it is better than this dunya, the materialistic life. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is narrated by Aisha, his wife. She, he said, two rak'ah in Al-Fajr is way better than this dunya and what is in it. SubhanAllah. It's better than all this materialistic life. It's better than all the cars that we have. It is better than all the money and the wealth that we have. It is a wealth by itself in our heart. We are rich by our heart, in our spirit, with, Allah, with our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third benefit of Fajr prayer, that it has a great reward if you pray Fajr in the masjid. The messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever left his home to the masjid, 10 rewards will be written for him every time he makes a step towards the masjid. Now we have cars, you know, and so people and so the scholars, they say, like, even if you come with your car, you get a reward for it. Subhanallah. And Allah will will count it as you are walking to the masjid. And the one who is sitting in the masjid waiting for the salah, for the prayer as a meditator will be written among the ones who pray until he goes back to his home. Subhanallah. The fourth benefits of Fajr prayer that it's that the angels will witness you. You know, the angels, actually, we have a right angel, 
that write our good deeds and we have a left angel, uh, angel that writes our bad deeds. In the time of Fajr and Asr, those angels actually will will uh, uh, will we will be swapped with other angels. So they will go up. They will take all our deeds all the way to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and then other angels will come down to write our bad and good deeds. So these angels will come up and go to the and go to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and they will witness that they actually saw us praying the Fajr prayers. Subhanallah. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the angels of the nights and the angels of the day gather together at the time of Fajr. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, said, read from the Quran, from a chapter, uh, from which uh, chapter? I think it's chapter 2, uh, verse 78. It says, indeed, the Quran's recitation of dawn is ever witnessed. Inna Quran al-Fajri kana mashhuda. So that means it is witnessed by the angels. Subhanallah. Fifth benefit of the Fajr prayer. Whoever pray Fajr, then the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write for him that he will enter Jannah. The messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the one who prays before the sunrise and before the sunset will not enter the hellfire. That's what he said. He, he means about the Fajr and the Asr prayer. Also, sixth benefit is that seeing the face of Allah Almighty, the best thing that you can see in heaven is not the women over there, is not the, uh, you know, the houses of gold, is not the streets of gold, is not the beautiful views and the nature over there. The best view that we're going to see in the day of judgment and in, the, in heaven is the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the tranquility that we will have when we see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Narrated by Jarir radiallahu an, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, we were at the Prophet, peace be upon him. He looked at the full moon, then said, you will see your Lord as you see this moon. You will not be confused or harmed when seeing him almighty. Remember when I told you about when the Prophet وسلم, went to the seventh heaven and he saw, and he saw light. When uh, his wife asked him, have you seen your Lord in the seventh heaven? He said, Nurun anna ara, means light. How could I see him? There was like some kind of curtain of light. This was like blocking him from Allah and from him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars said that if, uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened that curtain and just like a little bit of light comes out from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will just spear, pierce and destroy all the universe. This is how powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in the day of judgment, when we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give us the ability when, that when we see his face, we will not be harmed. And it will be a great, a great blessing for us to see him. He said, if you are able, do not miss the prayer before the sunrise, which is the Fajr prayer, and the prayer before the sunset, meaning Fajr and Asr. Then he, peace be upon him, recited and exalt Allah with praise of your Lord before the rising and the sun and before the settings. Subhanallah. So uh, th this, is, this is one of the benefits. The seventh benefit of the Fajr prayer, it is that, uh, that you get the reward of Qiyamul Layl. You get the reward as you have prayed the whole night before the sunrise. Narrated by Uthman bin Affan, one of the greatest uh, sahaba, the greatest uh, companions, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, I heard the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever prays Isha prayer with a group, it is as he prayed half of the night. And whoever prays Subh, which is Fajr prayer, also there is another name for Fajr, which is Subh prayer with a group, it is as he prayed the whole night, subhanAllah. So that's why it is recommended for the men to go to the masjid and pray with the group because they get a reward as they have done Qiyamul Layl, as they have prayed the whole night. Now for the sisters, it is not obligated for them to go to the masjid because of all the duties that they have at home and you know, so they won't be harassed and things like that. But if they could come to the masjid, that would be great. There is nothing to prevent them from coming to the masjid. But also if you have the intention 
to pray the Fajr and wake up and do it with your family at home, with your children or with your uh, with your husband and so on. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you that reward, inshallah. The eighth benefit of Fajr prayer, it is the dua, the, du the angels will make dua for you. It is narrated by Ali, radiyallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, I heard the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, whoever prays Fajr prayer, then sits in their place. The angels will be praying for him. They, they will pray and Allah forgive him or her. Oh Allah, have mercy upon him or her. This is what they will be praying. They will say and say, Allahumma ghfir lahu, Allahumma rhamhu. Oh Allah, have uh, forgive him, oh Allah, have mercy on him. Subhanallah. So the angels will be also making dua for us when we pray the Fajr prayer. Especially if we sit after the, 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 the prayer and we do kunut. Kunut means supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we completely submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connect with him and make some dua for, uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also there is another hadith. It says that if you sit in there until the sunrise, is is you get a reward as you have done hajj as you have done pilgrimage now you have to have comp you have to sit in that place don't talk to anyone sit in your place just doing tasbih or dhikr or read, read quran or doing supplication dua and so on with complete intention that you will be doing this for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ninth reward, as I said, it is a hajj or and umrah. The messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever prayed fajr with a group, then sat while supplicating to Allah doing dua until the sunrise, then prayed two rak'ad after this, which is like they call it also the duha prayer. His or her reward will be the same as the reward of complete hajj and complete umrah. But again, you have to have the complete sincerity and the complete, you know, uh, uh, devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last benefit of Fajr prayer, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that it is a protection from, that Allah will give you a protection for the whole day, you know, in that day. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever prayed Fajr, they would be under the protection of Allah. That's what he said for the whole day, subhanAllah. So whatever whatever this person will ask during the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him protection and will, will help him inshallah. So those are the benefits of Fajr prayer. Now, there, there is also a bonus benefit of Fajr prayer where the messenger of Allah, peace and blessing said that Fajr prayer give you peace and tranquility and will protect you from the hellfire. Uh, and protect you from shaitan. At the night, you know, the shaitan will come and he makes some knots in our ears, you know, subhanAllah. And, uh, and, and there would be three knots. So the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, shaitan or Satan makes three knots on the head of the one sleeping and whispers on the knots, you know, in the ears. And the night is long for you, then stay sleeping. That's what he says. The shaitan would say, the night is so long for you, then stay sleeping, don't wake up. If the person wakes up and mentions the name of Allah, like if someone wake up and say, la ilaha illallah, one of the knots will dissolve. Then when he or she makes wudu, ablution, then the second knot will be dissolved. And then when he and she prays fajr, then the third knot dissolves, then the person will become active, peaceful. Otherwise, he or she will be disturbed and lazy. Subhanallah. And I, this, I, you know, experience this this my myself. If I miss Fajr, the whole day would be all corrupted for me. I feel like there is something wrong. I feel like I'm always late. I'm always delayed, you know. But when someone wakes up for Fajr on time and pray for Fajr, they will feel that they are more active. They feel that they they you know, that they are finishing their work on time, uh, they're on schedule, they will do whatever they actually plan to do by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, Fajr prayer is very important, you know, and it has a lot of benefits and virtues. Of course, there is a voluntarily prayer, which is the, they call it the sunnah prayer, that it's two rak'ah right before Fajr, and it's kind of like gets you into the mood of the Fajr prayer that you will be praying afterward, you know, the two, the, 
you know, you pray the two rakahs first or the sunnah prayer or the way the prophet, peace be upon him, prayed, and it is a voluntary prayer. And then after that, you pray that other two rakahs, that obligatory prayer. And those, like, it kind of like put you in the spiritual mood with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give you a little bit of energy and, and active, you will be active. So when you stand by with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the time of the uh, Fajr prayer, then uh, uh, in the obligatory prayer, then you will be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It draw you closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that's what we need, inshallah. We need to stay connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen us, to give us energy to wake up for Fajr, to cleanse us from our sins, and to give us the reward of the Fajr prayer whenever we pray it, and give us also the full intention and the sincerity to worship Allah. Allahumma anna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Oh Allah, help us in doing dhikr, in mentioning you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa shukrika, and to thank you always and give thanksgiving to you. And and to worship you in the best manners. I say this and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. If I said something right, then it is an inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I said something wrong, then it is from my nafs. Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad, his family, and his companions. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon you. All jazakumullah khair. Any question, inshallah. I don't think there is anyone online anyway. So inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Oh yeah? MashaAllah. I didn't actually pay attention. Jazakumullah khair. <laughs>